Hey there guys, how's it going? You may notice I'm joined on my table here by a, a new little friend. And I wanted to make this video, really, as this telescope has been entirely funded by my YouTube channel. So I wanted to introduce the scope to you guys who've made purchasing this thing possible. Now, this is a new to me, it's actually a used telescope. Skywatcher Skymax 180. So that's a 180mm aperture Maxotov. My first ever Maxotov that I've owned. Uh, and I have to say, after initial testing, I am rather impressed with this thing. And you'll note, it also came with a Crayford focuser, optionally, on the back. I've just got a uh, player when you're in a C as a camera in there for a little bit of lunar imaging that I was trying out. And uh, overall, I have to say, I've been rather impressed by this thing. Now, it's an extremely long focal length instrument, and I wanted that specifically because I want to try and do a little bit more content around imaging the moon and planets and things like that where possible. And I think this could be perfect for it because it's nothing, you know, too drastically massive where it's going to be a real pain uh, to actually get it outside and used. It's able to just be picked up and moved around no problem at all. It's about seven or eight kilograms or something like that. This should be a Effectively, a grab and go instrument for a little bit of visual too, which I'm also looking forward to trying out with this thing. Now, the very, very long focal length is going to allow me to actually hit those targets, as I say, but I did also at the same time get hold of a few Barlow lenses so I can try some extremely long magnification planetary imaging, a two times and a three times Celestron LX Barlows uh, is what I have, so I'm going to try those out too as soon as I possibly can. Um, but there are a few drawbacks to Maxitov's, as it turns out. So this is my first one, and I went into it not blind. I did, uh, you know, quite a bit of research beforehand. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it right now. So I'm going to change over my view, and I'll show you the simulated field of view of this thing. So this is with the IMX 585 Uranus C uh, on the scope in its native configuration. So this is about 2,700 millimeters of focal length, and as you can see, the red box denotes the field of view, so pretty tight, as I'm sure you'll uh, you will agree. If you had a Barlow to that, you know, that's a two times Barlow, for example, and then a three times Barlow, and you can see we are very, very, very punched in now, probably not that usable uh, for a lot of cases. Um, I think most knights won't support that kind of magnification, given that this thing natively, like I say, is 2.7 meters of focal length anyway. Adding Barlow's on top of that is going to require some excellency and to actually make use of. But I think it should offer some uh, some very interesting views of the planets, especially when we uh, when we get the chance to see them again from here in the UK. Now, the older ones of these scopes uh, were extremely well regarded, and the newer ones, it seems, are even more so. Um, one interesting point I thought to mention is that this lady here, Astro Baby, she'd done some testing with her gold tube, Mac 180, and discovered that they, the old ones actually had an effective aperture of 170 millimeters. Now that has been rectified for the, uh, the newer tubes, like the one that I've got here, and you actually get the full usable 180 millimeters of aperture, which should yield a very slight theoretical resolution advantage over, uh, you know, the slightly older ones. Assuming that everything else is equal and, you know, the optical figure of them both is uh, the same. Uh, but one other thing to actually get the most out of these scopes is you do need to collimate them. So when I bought this telescope, uh, it was <laughs> quite a bumpy ride home, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and it, it, Basically, I got it back home and it was significantly miscollimated by that point. Now, apparently, the, uh, the Maxitovs are meant to be pretty bulletproof as far as collimation stability is concerned and actually when I went to collimate this thing after checking it out one of the very first nights that I got it uh, I noticed that a few of the locking bolts were completely undone unfortunately so uh, maybe they'd worked out with vibration or just never really been done up tight enough in the first place I don't really know but uh, they are now and I had to teach myself collimation of these Maxitovs and I have to say it's very easy indeed I think it's not all like collimating a Newtonian, it's much more like collimating a Schmidt Cassegrain. I think, where it's just really one set of three adjustments. Um, and rather than being at the front, like normally you do your adjustments on a Schmidt Cassegrain, of course, adjusting the secondary mirror. We can't do that on the Maxitov because the secondary mirror is literally a silvered segment of that large, thick 
glass meniscus plate on the uh, on the front right there. So all your adjustments are done by tilting a cup or rather cell, if you will, um, on the primary mirror itself. So you tilt the whole primary mirror. Unfortunately, you can't tilt the focuser also independently, which would be really cool for getting everything co-aligned. But because you can't tilt that focuser, some amount of misalignment is to be expected, you know, focuser tilt and things like that. Uh, which leads to, I can try and show you, I, I prepared... Uh, an image that someone had posted to Cloudy, Cloudy Nights earlier, and I thought this demonstrated it quite well. So this is, you know, intra and extra focal, or maybe the opposite way around. But you'll note the shadow of the secondary shifts quite a way off when you're going from intra to extra focal. That means you can't focus with a significantly defocused star. It needs to be actually much more like, you know, this, this, or ideally, calling it on an in-focus star works well but i found it takes a long long time to actually cool this thing down and get it to the point where you can see the airy disc uh and collimate from that now being that i want to use this thing as a bit of a grab and go scope i am trying to make steps to uh, making that as usable as possible in that regard now cool down is a well-known issue with large maxitovs such as this one um however there is apparently a way around it that people have been doing for a while now where they don't actually actively try to cool the, tel the telescope, but rather, if I just open this other tab right here, the insulate telescope, um, which is, I guess, just another way of going about preventing the exchange of heat through the side of the tube and the cell and things like that, which is really what causes all those thermal effects that you'll see, which makes it so hard to collimate and also more importantly, so hard to get, you know, sharp uh, lunar or planetary images um, when the inside of the scope is very turbulent because there's a lot of convection happening in there. Um, your views are very mushy, but once it has cooled, it's razor sharp. I have to say it's a very impressively sharp telescope, but getting it there, as I say, it takes a long time. So I'm going to look at actually making a jacket for this thing like you see uh, this gentleman's done here. On his Skywatch 180 Mac, and um, while it looks maybe a little bit space age, a little bit mad, apparently it works really, really well because you're slowing down the rate at which those currents can actually even happen. Um, if you stop your scope from rapidly cooling, then you're not going to see any of the associated thermals with a rapid change in tube internal temperature, that air temperature, having to adjust. Um, so. There's a lot that can be done with these things, and I actually have a lot of hope for this uh, solution. It seems like people have tried a bunch of different ways, and it's it looks like it works well, so I'm more than willing to give it a go and uh, see how that turns out. But basically, I just wanted to make a very short and simple video for you guys uh, as a bit of a thank you to say, you know, thanks for your support in allowing me to actually get this uh, interesting looking <laughs> little beast of a telescope. And um, that's kind of my plans for it. So look to see this thing coming up in future videos. If you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see done with it, then I'm all ears. Um, and yeah, thanks again, basically. So yeah, as always, thank you very much for your support. I'll hopefully have a lot more to share from this thing um, in future videos. But all the same, it's probably the last time you're going to see this thing <laughs> looking like this with its standard... Uh, paint job. I'm gonna probably make a jacket and leave it on this thing as, as mentioned for the thermal reasons uh, So I thought I'd make this introduction video now. Anyway, that's about it. Look after yourselves guys And I will see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed that and clear skies